How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student and today we're going to be going over the post top surgery workout guidelines, the expectations and reality. So I'm going to be breaking down the recommended, I say recommended because it's generalized timeline for going back to working out, whether it's cardio or strength training after top surgery and also sharing my experience, my personal experience of going back to working out as an active individual after top surgery. The reason why I'm making this video is because I realize that not everybody is the same, not everybody's going to actually fit the recommended guidelines. I am a much softer person, my tan, my, my tan, my pain tolerance isn't as high as most people. So I wanted to share my expectations and reality, but also share some other anecdotes from other people who have had top surgery done. I will say that please listen to your body after top surgery when you're thinking about going back to the gym or going back to running or doing whatever it is that you do. And please do not over strain yourself that could lead to injury that could lead to further harm of your top surgery scars and actually it can actually slow recovery. So listen to your body do things when it's right and actually try to at least somewhat stay along the recommended guidelines. I will say it's better to wait longer than the recommended guidelines than to push it back two or three weeks and try to think and try to do things earlier than what the guidelines tell you to do because that will expose you to further injury. All of the guidelines that I'm going to spew out to you can be found on genderconfirmation.com. It's actually run by Dr. Scott Mosser, one of the best top surgeons in the country. And I trust his advice and I trust his knowledge. So check it out if you want to see the written version of whatever it is that you want to check out. He has a lot of information about post-top surgery recovery on his website. So the current guidelines say that you should not lift anything more than five pounds during the first three weeks of top surgery. And I completely agree with this. I personally couldn't lift a single thing. I could lift mugs to drink out of, but I couldn't do anything much else. Like the first three weeks, I was basically dependent on someone else to take care of me. Luckily, my mom and my partner Dandy were with me in Texas when I had my top surgery and I was there for two weeks and my mom took care of me that last week before I moved back to my apartment. But yeah, you can't really do anything. I mean, like even if you wanted to, you're not really going to be able to do it. My mom and my partner and I had big plans of me walking around Texas and checking out parks and things during our two weeks there because the doctor said I should be able to walk as soon as after I'm done with surgery. And although I Although I could walk, and I did walk to the grocery store in Texas because we live literally less than half a mile away from it, it was incredibly painful to even walk. So the walking that I did do was just to upkeep my health, but I didn't want to over strain myself. I also found that if I walked a little too briskly and I started getting <sighs> kind of breathy, uh, that would hurt. That would hurt a lot, actually. So. All of my movements were very limited in the first three weeks. I know in some guides it says you can start driving after the first week of top surgery. Even I would not be able to do that. I, I didn't do that actually during my first three weeks because it was so painful to even move around. So after the three weeks, you're actually good to go and start doing some light cardio as long as it's not using the arms too much. And this is where most people start running, start biking, start doing those things. However, I will say based on anecdotes from the internet and other people I've talked to who have had top surgery, people who ran and people who rode their bikes have noted that even though they could do those things, because of the bouncing that happens and like the traction that happens with your shirt when you're doing those activities, it can elicit pain when you're doing them. Me, I went back to doing the recumbent bike. I am, I, I actually don't know how to ride a bike. I know it's kind of pathetic, but I went back doing the recumbent bike and that was pretty easy because I'm leaning back on the chair and I was able to go back to doing cardio. However, if it came to the upright stationary bike where you're leaning like a real bike, that was still pretty painful because I'm leaning and I'm using my chest muscles to um, bear weight with my upper body. So 
just be very careful even though they give you the a-ok to start doing cardio and start doing some light exercises after the first three weeks it might take some getting used to and also i realized that even though it hurts in the beginning i wouldn't necessarily say to push through the pain but if you start making yourself a little bit uncomfortable but not too uncomfortable and getting used to that eventually your body adapts to it your body starts blocking out the pain and eventually that pain goes away luckily the next guideline milestone they talk about physical activity i was able to meet pretty easily within five to six weeks after your surgery you can go back to doing moderate to light exercise using weights not heavy bodybuilding lifting but like little 15 20 10 pounders if you're doing that or some aerobics class you can do that again and I got back into working out just fine after six weeks. After a month and a half, I was back to working out as I usually do without free weights at the gym. I, unfortunately, got my top surgery during a pandemic, the worst pandemic in the last 100 years. So I was out of the gym, but my roommate at the time had a yoga mat, had a whole rack of weights that she had purchased before. So I basically had a small little at-home gym available to me at all times. I even bought resistance bands ahead of time before all of them went out of stock, luckily, to work out at home and I was able to go back to doing those things. I will say, take extra precaution in the beginning when you're fi first doing movements again because you're gonna feel that tightness in your chest, like doing things like push-ups, doing things like cable flies and also dumbbell flies. Yes, you can do them after the six weeks, but it takes a week or two to start getting adjusted to them because you're gonna feel that tightness of the scar. And I do think going back to regular exercise after six weeks will help those scars become more mobile and less rigid and allows your skin to uh, gain its flexibility back. I, I really do think that exercise after top surgery is really important for things like this. So you can get some of that mobility back. You can gain some of those pre-surgery athleticism back that you might have missed out on. Now, for most people, light and moderate exercise without extremely heavy free weights is what you're doing in your general life. So you're done, you're ready to live life the way you want to as far as your physical athletic life after top surgery. But people like me who's into weight training, people who are into bodybuilding, we have to wait quite a lot longer to meet newer milestones in our mobility and movement. You should wait, and I know this is really painful to hear for some people, up to three months, actually at least three months before you start heavy lifting at the gym again and i say this because you really don't want to stretch out your scars if you do not care about stretching out your scars then by all means you can do that but i am someone who really did care about the appearance of my scars so i waited those three months to go back to doing heavy 100 pound 90 pound lifts and I started off without doing the bench press. I realized when I went to the gym and I tried to do the bench press without any weights, just the bar, that first three months, uh, after that first three months, that it was still, it felt, it felt really stretchy. It felt like it was tearing my skin um, when I was doing it. So I waited four months to actually start going back to bench press. But all the other heavy, heavy lifting, heavy compound lifts, I was doing squats, I was doing deadlifts, I was doing shoulder, no, not shoulder presses, I waited. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get back to you on that one. But I was doing all the heavy compound lifts that didn't require any overhead lifting. But I did miss out on the bar and any form of shoulder exercises after the three months because you really wanna wait six months for any form of overhead exercises if you want the best appearance of your scars. That's super painful to hear, but I did it and I was able to still have a pretty good physique, but it was necessary for me. If you don't care, you can you can start going back to overhead lifts, but it took me around six months to finally be comfortable doing overhead presses and using the bar to do chin-ups and ab exercises. And even trans bodybuilder Aiden Doling has said that you should wait up to six 
months before you do any form of overhead pressing exercises to preserve as much of the architecture of your scars as possible. Aiden Dolan even goes on to say to not do any overhead exercises for up to a year. I think that's excessive, but if you really want the best scars possible, go ahead and do that. I started doing bar work and shoulder presses after six months, and even that took a little bit of time. I had to go very, very slowly. I was scared to even lift my arms up all the way. I was reaching out in cabinets, but to hang on a bar, you feel that stretch. I still feel that stretch now, and I'm almost a year into top surgery. But I do think after I started doing the overhead hangs and the overhead presses after the six months, my scars did stretch out a little bit, but not as stretched out as if I were to have started that much earlier. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my top surgery workout timeline and the general guidelines that I've set out to you. After about a year, you're basically free to do whatever it is that you want. I would even say after the first three months, most people gain most of their mobility back. I just wanted to be extra careful. And if you're like me, then I'm glad this video has helped you out in some way. Please share it with someone else if you think it'll help them out with understanding what to do after having top surgery done. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and my activism and what I do in the research, medical, public health sphere. I'm doing a lot of that kind of stuff right now. And I'll see you on the next video. This has been.